Hi guys, it's your science teacher here, back with another video. This time it's all on B6, which is preventing and treatment of diseases. Uh, it's quite a short topic, so a bit of a snappy video here for you. Uh, I hope you enjoy it, and please remember at the end of the video to like it and uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel. A lot of communicable diseases have now had a vaccine created against them uh, to stop the spread of that particular disease. Now, vaccination can be used to treat viruses and bacterial infections. How viruses work is a small part of dead or inactive form of the disease is injected into the body. What, you're, what happens when you've been injected is your immune system and your white blood cells will attack the invasive uh, pathogen that's been uh, injected into your body. And your white blood cells will create antibodies and antitoxins uh, onto the inactive or dead form of the pathogen. This means that your body will know how to fight the disease if you catch it for real. So what if you catch it, uh, if you get the active form of the pathogen, it gets into your body uh, and passes through all your physical barriers and gets inside you and your white blood cells have to attack it, your body now knows how to fight it and you are said to become now immune. And that is vital. Um, enough of a population needs to get vaccinated in order to have uh, eradicate a virus uh, or bacterial infection. And uh, wh what it's called when you have completely uh, eradicated is you said that you've got herd immunity. And this means that uh, the virus cannot spread and cause a pandemic uh, like we experienced with the COVID-19 outbreak. So uh, how it works is basically if you have over 80% of the population uh, that have been vaccinated, this means that the disease cannot spread. That's because if someone wants to get the disease, they, the chances of them spreading it to someone who was uh, not immune is very unlikely. However, if only, uh, say, about 50% are vaccinated of the population, this is a worrying thing because uh, there is no herd immunity there and the disease can spread uh, still quite quickly. Um, that's why it's so important that parents vaccinate their children. Um, and there is a bit of debate on whether vaccination is 100% safe. And that's why some people don't get vaccinated. And it's kind of a moral confliction uh, in the fact that some parents will not vaccinate their children. Uh, and that, that stops herd immunity. Uh, but the fact of the matter is they, they believe that it's not safe. Deciding how to treat an infection uh, is massively important. That's why usually when you're ill, you have to go to the doctor so they diagnose you with something and then they decide the course of treatment that you take. Uh, the two main treatments are antibiotics and painkillers. And depending on whether you've got a viral or a bacterial disease, usually depends on which route you go down. Bacterial infections are often treated uh, by antibiotics uh, and uh, painkillers uh, do not treat uh, bacterial diseases. Usually they are for viral treatments uh, and they don't actually um, kill the disease off. What they do is they lower the symptoms. They make the symptoms more bearable. Now, Antibiotics, uh, you, you need to get prescribed by a doctor. Uh, if you've got a infection, your doctor will write you up a, a prescription and you will go pick it up from a pharmacist. But a painkiller can often be brought over a counter. Um, and uh, it depends how strong it is. Uh, obviously, if you've got a severe viral infection and you need really strong painkillers, Sometimes uh, they have to be prescribed by a pharmacist um, and picked up by a pharmacist as well. As I said, uh, an antibiotics, uh, what they do is they uh, kill bacteria, uh, whereas painkillers, uh, they only lessen the symptoms.
The reason why antibiotics cannot just be put over the counter is because of antibiotic resistance. And antibiotic resistance is rendering lots of antibiotics ineffective. And the way antibiotic resistance works is uh, that bacteria, they mutate. That means they change, okay? And these random mutations mean that some of them are antibiotic resistant. Now, uh, if you take too many antibiotic uh, antibiotics, what happens is these antibiotic resistant bacteria, these uh, are the only ones that survive, okay? And because these are the only ones that survive, they reproduce and they become the main strand now, okay? They're the main strand of that disease. And therefore, the, the antibiotic that usually was used to cure uh, that disease is now uh, ineffective. Now, antibiotic resistance is uh, becoming a, a massive problem due to the fact that uh, we overprescribe antibiotics. Also, we use antibiotics on animals. Uh, to make sure our food is safe, make sure uh, our animals don't have uh, bacterial infections. And all of this is resulting in massive, massive problems for the pharmaceutical industry. And it takes a massively long time to develop new drugs. New drugs need to go through uh, lots and lots of testing before being brought to market. The testing first involves uh, by practicing drugs on groups of cells um, and this is where lots of the drugs fail. Um, most drugs fail at this stage because of the fact uh, that they have uh, a high, too high toxicity or they, they cause a lot of other problems in themselves. Uh, but if they do pass the cell test, uh, there is the animal testing involved next and after animal testing, uh, they are tried on patients, and after being tried on patients, uh, then finally they can be released to the public. Now, this is a very long process. It can take around 10 years for all of these stages to be finally complete, and it can also cost a lot of money, up to about uh, 100 million pounds, just to bring one new drug to market. So uh, it, you can see the process is really, really long and that's why we want to avoid antibiotic resistance as much as we can. Now I want to focus on this patient testing uh, as much as possible. So the patients are volunteers uh, and it works by a, a double blind trial. Double blind trials uh, work by giving half the patients a placebo drug uh, which is a fake drug, uh, and half the patients get uh, the real drug. Um, so that basically uh, removes something called the placebo effect. And the placebo effect is when people start to feel better just by taking a drug. That it doesn't mean that they're taking something uh, that is actually relieving any of the symptoms. They just feel a little bit better because their mind is, is playing tricks on them because they are taking a drug. Now, in a double blind trial, neither the doctor knows which one is the placebo or the patient doesn't know either. The only people who know are the scientists. They're the only ones who know uh, which one is which. Uh, and it, that's important because it removes bias from the experiment. If doctors knew which one uh, was the real drug, they'd be looking out for things a lot more uh, because they would want to see how that drug is getting along. So it removes bias from the experiment by doing it uh, double blind. If you're doing combined science, well done. You have finished the video. Remember to drop it a like if you enjoyed the video. Uh, if you are doing triple science, you just have a little bit longer to go uh, as we're going to start looking at monoclonal antibodies now. We know that antigens are found on the surface of uh, many pathogens. And we also know that for uh, uh, an antibody to work, it needs to be a specific shape uh, or structure to be able to bind onto the antigen and destroy it. Now, monoclonal antibodies are antibodies that have been designed in a lab, in a lab 
uh, and not actually designed by our white blood cells. And uh, they have fantastic, fantastic potential uh, to be used. In fact, even uh, in cancer treatments, uh, they, they're expected to work as they could bind to cancer cells and uh, stop the cancer reproducing. Um, and also in many different communicable diseases, uh, they can be used, um, obviously, because they can bind uh, to the antigen. Uh, also, they are used in pregnancy tests. Uh, they will bind uh, to the hormone released when you're pregnant, known as HCG. Uh, so monoclonal antibodies have significant, uh, significant potential. But how do we design such uh, antibodies? Well, uh, it takes quite a lot of work, actually, and it, it involves mice. What happens is the mice is injected with a specific antigen so that it produces antibodies uh, that will fight off uh, that infection. So it will produce now antibodies. And what happens is uh, then uh, small parts of uh, them antibodies are taken from that mouse. And remember that uh, antibodies are found in the lymphocytes uh, of the white blood cells. So uh, the lymphocytes are taken from that mouse and they are combined uh, with actual cancer cells. Um, and these are known as a hybridoma uh, when they are combined uh, with the cancer cells. Uh, as their own, them, them tumor cells struggle to reproduce. However, when combined with the antibodies, now they can reproduce uh, so that they can be grown in mass culture and then can be uh, used in treatments. Now that is in fact the end of this topic. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed the video. Remember, if you did enjoy the video, please drop it a like and remember to subscribe to my uh, channel at Your Science Teacher.